my name is Chris Nackemann. I'm a PhD student at the University of Hildesheim in Germany. And together with my colleague Julia Rieck, I worked on the dynamic right tailing problem. Um, thanks, Nick, for already introducing the problem. So I can skip a few parts here. Maybe we have a look at this um, image. Here we can here we can see the service area of Manhattan, which was the main part of the challenge. Um, and we have a few sampled requests and we can see that the density of the request is much higher in central areas. And Nick talked about the parking lots. We can see them here. So they are also distributed over the service area. Um, and yeah, we have three subtasks, the rejection of incoming requests. If we think we can't serve the request or if we don't want to serve some particular requests, then of course the assignment and the repositioning. And whenever a customer requests service, we have to serve the customer within a five minutes um, of waiting time. And the overall goal is to maximize the profit per day, which comes from the um, reward from serving the requests minus the travel costs. And the evaluation happens on three different instances, sizes, small, medium, and large. And the supply demand ratio is the same for all of the three instances, um, but they vary in the number of requests and vehicles, of course. This is the outline of my talk. First, I want to talk about our assignment and repositioning strategy. Um, we did not use the rejection um, because we didn't see any benefit in that. Then we have a quick look um, at our results. And then we come to the discussion section where I will explain why our use strategies worked so well and why other strategies uh, that we also tested didn't quite work. Um, and in the end, a quick outline look on future research in this area. So let's start with the assignment. There's a well-known strategy in the literature called the nearest assignment. Here we have three customers, red, green, and blue arriving in this particular order, and we have available vehicles. And the idea is to consider the customers in a first come, first serve fashion. So we start with the red customer, we compute the distances from the customer to all of the available vehicles and then as the name implies we select the nearest vehicle and then we continue um, that with the green customer now there are just three taxis available because this is already taken we select the nearest and do the same for the blue customer and then we have our assignment yes this strategy is pretty pretty simple and there are far more advanced strategies in literature but um, we use this as a basis for our approach for a good reason and we will see this in the discussion why other strategies didn't quite work in this particular setting. And you might ask yourself, isn't the um, order of the request, uh, requests um, pretty important? And yes, it is. So we don't want to use this first come, first serve order, but we want to specify our own order of requests. And here are, um, here's a list of open requests from the newest to the oldest one. And we can divide this list into two parts the new requests that we um, see for the first time in this decision epoch and the older requests that we saw previously, but we couldn't find um, a feasible vehicle for them. And the idea is to keep the new requests in their uh, original order and we shuffle the older requests randomly. Then we perform an iterative nearest assignment. So we go through the list from here to there. Um, and search for each, each request um, for the nearest vehicle and nearest regarding travel time. And we assign this nearest vehicle to the request, but just if the expected travel time is less than five minutes because we have this five minute time constraint. If the closest vehicle is further away than five minutes, we ignore this request for a moment and come back to that later and just consider the next one. And after we um, we are done with one iteration. We perform a second iteration where we consider now the requests without an assignment, and then we do more or less exactly the same, but now we ignore the five minute time constraint because it's just an expected travel time and maybe our travel time estimation is not so accurate. So we try to get lucky um, because we uh, do not have something to do with the, the um, framework will evaluate if this assignment is actually feasible or not. Okay, I talked about travel time estimation. How did we uh, do this? Here we have our service area and we divided the service area into a grid of smaller zones. 
Um, and then we sampled from our framework or from the given framework um, requests as historical data. And then we were able to um, store the average speed of the vehicles for each combination of pickup and drop off zone for each 30 minute time slot over the course of the day. And we use this as an estimation for the speed. And then uh, with the speed, we can estimate the travel time. Of course, there are more um, approaches for this travel time estimation. We also used a random forest or we experimented with random forest and we got better results actually. But the difficulty is that random forests are pretty slow um, when it goes to um, evaluating the actual travel time. And this part is time critical in our framework. And we will see this also in the discussion part. Um, so we had to trade accuracy and calculation speed a little bit in order to um, have a um, pretty, pretty fast uh, strategy. Now to the repositioning here, we used a, a bit more sophisticated methods, I would say. So first we have parking lots P1, P2 and P3 and we want to create parking lot zones. And these zones cover the area um, around the parking lot that is reachable within five minutes of travel time from this parking lot. Then we can calculate the zone supply. And the zone supply is just we count the number of vehicles in this particular zone, and it doesn't matter that these zones overlap. This is totally fine. So we can count them, then we have this zone supply. And because repositioning is supposed to do some kind of supply and demand balance, um, we need to estimate the zone demand as well. And here we used something um, similar to the travel time estimation. We used our historical data um, for, the, um, for the demand estimation. And then we had the estimated demand in the near future for this particular parking lot zone. And with these two numbers, we can calculate an undersupply probability. And the undersupply probability means um, this is the probability that our given supply will not be enough to serve the expected demand. And for the demand, we assume a Poisson distribution with an expected value of our demand estimation. So we can translate this to an undersupply probability. And this is the probability that um, we will miss a request because there will be more demand than supply. And now comes the important part. Many repositioning strategies in the literature just try to balance demand and supply and do not really consider the costs of doing so. And um, we want just a repositioning of a vehicle when there's actually benefit of doing so. So we combine this undersupply probability with a reward estimation. We want to calculate the expected missed reward if we do not send another vehicle to this um, parking lot zone. And uh, in different parts of the service area, the request reward will be different um, because um, maybe trips are longer or shorter at different um, places. Um, and we combine this and then we can see what the actual expected missed reward will be if we multiply this. And how do we use this? Uh, we use this um, at two different points. First, whenever there's a vehicle without a job, it needs um, a parking lot for idling because idling is just allowed at predefined parking lots. And here we compare our zone reward with the travel costs for going to this um, parking lot zone. And um, then we send the vehicle to the zone with the highest profit. Additionally, in regular intervals, for example, every 20 minutes, um, we want to reposition all of the idling vehicles um, because maybe they are misplaced uh, in total. So here we compare the zone reward with the travel costs for all of the vehicles. Then we select the one cost minimum matching of the best vehicle and the best zone. Then we send this vehicle to uh, the selected zone and then we have to update the zone reward for this zone because now there's one um, vehicle more. So there is one supply more Then the under supply probability will change and therefore so the expected missed reward will change. And this procedure we continue for all of the remaining idling vehicles until every idling vehicle has received a repositioning um, drop. And here it is important to note that um, the vehicles that we want to reposition are not considered in the supply of the zones. 
why not? If we would consider them, then we would need to integrate what will happen if one vehicle from one zone leaves this zone to arrive at another zone. So there we have to decrease the supply, etc. And we um, uh, didn't want to do this. So we just say vehicles that are idling are not there. Um, and we just ask where are they needed and then we send them to this zone and this works because we um, consider the travel costs. All right, um, then a uh, quick look at our results here. We report the average reward per vehicle. Um, down here it's the absolute reward for those who are familiar with the numbers, but the average reward makes it easier to compare between the different instance sizes, small, medium, and large. And we, um, we compared three different repositioning strategies. The nearest repositioning, where we just select the nearest available parking lot, the random repositioning, where we select a random parking lot, and the balance-based approach, this is the one I just presented. And as you can see, our repositioning approach is better than the other two benchmarks in all of the instances. And what is particularly um, interesting is that for, small, for the small instance, for small fleets, um, this benefit is much higher than in, uh, in larger um, instances. And we want to take a look at this in um, the discussion part. So why is the repositioning for small fleets so important? Here we can see the service area at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. I um, selected a random possible customer location marked with a black triangle there. And I also colored all of the possible locations where a vehicle would be in order to arrive at this customer within two minutes, three and a half minutes, or five minutes of travel time. Why three different values? Because maybe this vehicle um, is currently busy and has to finish its current job, and then not the whole five minutes will be available for actually going to the customer. And as you can see, this area is not really big compared to the whole service area. And if we um, look at the number of vehicles that we have in total for the small instance, 14, 14 vehicles are not really enough to actually cover the whole service area. And if we have too few vehicles available, it is um, much more important to reposition them well in order to have the chance to actually um, serve some requests. And this is also supported um, by the numbers at the service rate. So as I said, the supply demand ratio is the same for all three instance sizes. And you would expect that then the service rate would be pretty similar. And this is more or less the case for the medium and large instance, um, but the service rate in the small instance is um, much lower. And this um, would also indicate that um, there are just not enough vehicles. Then the second question is, why is the repositioning not so important for larger fleets? Because the benefit compared to the random repositioning was not, not, so, not so big. And here I have the fleet utilization for the medium instance. And in red, we can see the number of busy vehicles over the course of the day. Um, and there were 100 in total, so most of the vehicles are busy. And in green, we can see the number of open requests. And you can see here are a lot of open requests and here are a lot of open requests why all of the vehicles are busy. So we seem to have some kind of over demand or under supply. And if we have such a situation, then repositioning is not really important because it doesn't really matter where the vehicles are, there are more requests to serve. So we don't have to be at the right spot in order to get a request because there are just so many more requests than available vehicles. And we wanted to, to prove this theory and we did an experiment. We reduced the number of open, uh, the number of, of total requests compared to the vehicles by 25% in order to balance out supply and demand a little bit better. And then we compared the benefit of our repositioning compared to the random repositioning before and after. And uh, after reducing the number of requests, the benefit of our repositioning compared to the random repositioning increased by 60% for the medium instance and by over 100% for the large instance. So repositioning is important for larger fleets, but uh, you need to consider the supply and the demand ratio. Okay, last thing I want to discuss is why does this very simple nearest assignment strategy work so well? Why not something matching based? And here I have to say that travel time estimation in this particular setting is quite difficult. 
I can't go into the details here why um, this is due to time constraints, but it is quite difficult. And therefore, there are some travel time estimation errors. And these errors complicate matching-based approaches because in matching-based approaches, I need to make sure that the assignments that I do are actually feasible and we can't be sure if there are high estimation errors. Um, additionally, there has to be a trade-off between accuracy and calculation speed. I talked about that earlier. We also tried a more accurate travel time estimation model, but then the uh, total runtime of our um, implementation increased by a factor of three for the small instance and by a factor of 50 for the medium instance. And um, this is just not practical um, to use. So we had to go with the faster and less accurate model. Last important point here, matching based approaches work well when there are a lot of possible customer vehicle combinations, um, because then we can select the optimum one. But in this setting, there are not so many possible combinations because um, there's this very strict five minute constraint and this shrinks the solution space quite drastically. So there's no real advantage of the matching based approaches. And we thought, could this change if we increase the five minutes to 10 minutes? not for the challenge, but for our uh, experiments here. And we did this, and then we compared our newer strategy to a matching-based approach. And uh, we saw that for the small instance, they performed the same. And for the medium instance, the matching-based was actually a little bit better than the nearest one. So in the challenge setting, the nearest one was better, but there are possibilities to make matching-based approaches better. Then, I will conclude my talk with a quick outlook on uh, future research. We saw that the quality of assignment and repositioning strategies highly depends on environmental characteristics, like, for example, the supply demand ratio, the quality of the travel time estimation, maybe the ratio of reward and travel costs, because you need to consider how important it is to look at the travel costs, um, the maximum waiting time for the customers, if uh, this is part of the uh, objective function, etc. And two questions arrive, arise from that first, what is this, et cetera? So what else needs uh, to be considered in order to evaluate the strategies? And more importantly, which strategy is actually the best in each situation? And we want to answer these questions in the uh, future and want to continue our research in that area. Then I would like to thank you for your attention and please feel free to ask questions. Okay, hey, thank you, Christian, for that nice presentation. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the talk that Christian's team uh, won the challenge. So congratulations for that, Christian. Uh, do we have any questions in the room? I don't see, uh, I see, uh, oh, that was clapping. Uh, any question, please raise your virtual hand. I'm not seeing this. I'm not raising my hand here, Jorge, but I had a question. Sure. Yeah, so first of all, great talk. Thank you. Uh, so it sounds like you've uh, looked a bit into, you know, uh, what is the proper number of vehicles for a given demand? And I was wondering if you could talk more about how you might use what you've seen to determine, you know, if you just had some observed demand patterns, trying to figure out what the proper number of vehicles would be for a fleet. Um. You, you, um, you, you mean because I, I, I said we have, we have too few vehicles? Or? Right, yeah, and, and just sort of changing the ratio of supply demand that was given in the sort of simulator by default. I, I think that the problem is not the, the um, ratio of supply and demand because we saw for the medium and large instance this worked well with the same um, ratio. Maybe as I said, uh, let me go here, um, we can see that there, there is um, a slight um, under supply, but this is fine if, if, if you want that. The problem is that um, the combination of 14 vehicles and five minute time constraint um, is uh, compared to the, to the service area is problematic. Um, so um, I, I think I, I calculated a little bit because we, we can calculate the, the size of, of this, this um, uh, yeah, how, how, how uh, you, you, you know what I mean. You can calculate the size of this. Um, and then compare this to the whole size of the area. And I think um, 
double the, the number of vehicles. So 30 vehicles would have been more or less fine. Then we would uh, have seen something different, I guess. Um, but yeah, the main problem is the combination of 14, the size of the service area and the five minutes because five minutes shrinks the, the um, range of one vehicle in this setting. Um, 